Uh, two consecutive wins for West Ham United would be absolutely delightful as well. I think it's fair to say that on paper, our opposition view, sorry, our opposition quality uh, on, on paper next week is, is certainly... Uh, they're what well, they're better ultimately <laughs> lesser are better than Newcastle I'm trying to find fancy words for it but uh, that is exactly what I'm trying to say normally as you know uh, we get in a, a former player or a guest journalist who covers the team that West Ham are playing the next week but fortunately this week we've got Tony Cotty on for the entire podcast he scored 34 goals in 100 games for Leicester between 1997 and 2000 so uh, we decided not to bother with that what better man to ask than a man who's played for the club and still does some work for them Tony before we get on to the nitty gritty what sort of bits and pieces do you do with with Leicester at the moment well, very similar to what I do with West Ham, you know, I, I do bits and pieces for the program column, uh, media work, um, do Zoom stuff like what we're we're doing now, um, and every now and again, you know, work permitting. Um, I already said about might have a bit more chance to do work from this season, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I do um, I do a few commentaries and bits and pieces. But funny enough, they've left me alone for Monday night because I, I made it quite clear that I'm going to the game. As a as a West Ham fan, and I think they you know they know that I'm a hammer anyway, so they I think they just thought well, we won't get him talking about Leicester if he's going to support West Ham, which is probably the right decision. Um, so yeah, I'm looking, I'm going to the game and looking forward to it. Can't wait. Yeah, excellent stuff. Well, uh, Leicester beat Wolves one 0 at home in their first game of the season. Uh, Jamie Vardy with a near post goal just before half time a uh, little bit you know nothing nothing spectacular unlike some of the games we saw the first game of the season but uh, what did you make of their their first game <clears throat> well it was very much um, a grinding result i think it's fair to say from Leicester um, you know the wolves are, are a decent team um, had a bit of a funny season last year got change of manager as well um, and they actually had like a really good chance you know Traore that we all know about is so quick isn't he and he really had a a wonderful chance to put Wolves up about three or four minutes before Vardy actually got his goal. So um, there was no uh, Fafana and no Johnny Evans uh, for Leicester, which is why when we were talking about my, obviously my, my bet for, for the goal scorer, you know, I said about Obana because I do think they can be vulnerable from um, free kicks and corners. Um, they do zonal marking as well. So that's something that I, you know, I've, listen, I've, I've moaned to Leicester about it because I'm not a fan of zonal marking. But that is something that if they are employing this year, that's something that we can exploit on Monday night. Um, but what we must remember is you know, that you've got a fantastic centre forward in Jamie Vardy. This is a, a guy that's actually getting better. Um, you know, I think he's, what, 34 years of age now. And although he's perhaps not as lightning quick as what he would have been five or six years ago, he's still very sharp in the brain. He's got all the experience now that you get through being 34 years of age. And um, I don't know whether you saw his goal at the weekend. It was an mm. absolutely fantastic striker's goal. Um, yep. And, you know, they've got the type of players that can get the service in. And, you know, what you have to do with Leicester, you, you have to stop them at source. You've got to stop them getting the ball wide because the likes of Ricardo and Luke Thomas, who played at the weekend, and Harvey Barnes, you know, Perez, they're good players that can get on the ball, whip the ball in and, if you do that, you've got Vardy and perhaps even Ian Acho, who didn't play at the weekend. You've got him as well. We, they did play two up front for quite a few games last season. So they can be a real threat, Leicester. You know? So we, we've got to be on our guard. But overall, the game, as you quite rightly say, wasn't one of the glamour games of the weekend. You know, There wasn't that many that were like that, but it was probably one of them. Um, and a 1-0 victory was just about, just about the right result for Leicester, I think, if you're taking our Wolves play. Tony, just on that, actually, um, I've got a couple of other questions as well, which is kind of away from the pitch. But I want to just touch on what you said about their about their sort of their attacking sort of quick players. Um, do you think that they might set up a little bit differently this weekend, going on the basis of that they they arrived at London Stadium last season and found themselves three 0 down within? Well, it was it was in that period where we just kept scoring three goals against everyone, um, <laughs> and it kind of it kind of backfired a little bit the way they set up, and then they almost came back into it. Luckily, we managed to get three points, but. Do you think that would be on Brendan Rodgers' mind and might sort of come to West Ham a little bit more conser conservatively? Well, he might do, yeah. I mean, listen, I'm a huge Brendan Rodgers fan. I think um, I think he was very unlucky at Liverpool. You know, they could easily have won the league that season, couldn't they? You know, um, got picked mm. in the end. Um, so, I, I'm a big fan of him. Um, tactically, he's, you know, as I say, I've followed the club very closely over the last two years probably. And tactically, he normally gets it right. 
he normally, if he makes a substitution, it makes an impact on the game. Um, and, you know, he would have looked at what West Ham did at Newcastle, you know, to try and counter, you know, what, what they're going to do um, in a home game. And, you know, our guys, we, you know, we're, we're more than happy to soak up a little bit of pressure now and again and then hit them on the break. We're, we're good enough to do that, but we can also take the game as we showed and as you've already spoken about by going three goals up last year, we can take the game to clubs as well. So, you know, I think the one thing that's going to be inspirational on Monday night, and I can't wait, is the atmosphere. I think mm. the atmosphere will be, you know, there's been... It's not been as many games as I would have liked, I've got to be honest, but there have been some games at the London Stadium where the atmosphere has been absolutely electric. And I honestly think that it will be like that. I think we're all going to be so excited that we've gone back to the London Stadium and the fans are in, etc. And that will then, in itself, we, we, you know, we spoke about it before, didn't we, with how you know, team, away teams react to the home crowd and that. And that will put Leicester under pressure. You know, they have got a few players missing. Um, you've got players like James Madison who, who played, he started at the weekend and he's he's still trying to find his feet and get back to his form, been linked with Arsenal obviously maybe he's a bit unsettled with that, I don't know but um, you know, Brendan will look at it, um, the one thing he might do he might, as I say, bring Ian Acho in and if he does bring him up in up front they might tweak it and go as a 3 and a 5 and a 2, which he'd done on numerous occasions last year and it was very, very successful for them but, you know, make no bones about it, and, and I think you guys touched on it. This is a very, very good Leicester team. Um, mm. And they've got good players that can come into the team and into the squad and change the formation. So we've got to be wary, but without being too worried about it. Because, you know, sometimes I think you can get a little bit carried away, you know, looking at Vardy's and other players and worrying about them so much, when really what you want to do is concentrate on your own team and how you're going to take the game to them. I, I agree with you on the on the atmosphere front. I think I think on Monday night it's going to be it's going to be rocking. Thanks to last season and also just getting off to a winning start. I think the fans are going to get in there and they're going to be absolutely buzzing. But talking of of atmosphere, see Leicester Leicester always seen as being a club that just always seem to be doing things well, both on and off the pitch. And they've just announced uh, a a stadium, a new stadium plans, which look phenomenal. Um, what your have you seen those and what what are your thoughts on it? Because it just seems like a club that just continuously just building, like just like really really well. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's an amazing turnaround really, James. Because if you go back fifteen years, Leicester were in League One, you know. Yeah. And, mm. You know, listen, there's been some dire times at our club, but we've never gone sunk as low as League One, fortunately. And I hope that ne- day never comes. But <clears throat> excuse me, that was exactly where Leicester were, and you know then they got taken over. And, uh, and, you know, and under under Vichai, they won the Premier League. And then, of course, you know, we had that horrible he- helicopter crash and, you know, he died and the son, um, Kuntop, has now taken over. But whatever they seem to do, they seem to get it right. They've just built the best, the best training ground. Oh, in the yeah. And, mm. you know, we'll go on about Man City's and Chelsea's and Arsenal's and all these great training, Tottenham, you know. But Leicester have built the best training ground in the country. Um, you're quite right about the, the plans, James. They've got plans to make the, um, for those of the West Ham fans who've been to the KP Stadium, it's the stand opposite where the players run out, uh, mm. where the TV cameras are. They're going to put another tier on the top of there and that will make it up to a 40,000 uh, all-seater stadium. And beyond that stand, on the, the, there's loads of spare ground out the back and they get, apparently there's a concert venue and a hotel and you know, residential and... It, basically stuff for the community. Mm. And you can't emphasise that too much, that the, the owners, they're not owners who have gone into the club and, you know, they're looking for a quick return and get out sort of thing. They're in there for the for the long run. They love being a part of what goes on at Leicester. I don't know whether you saw the FA Cup final when they won the cup and they were holding the cup up and they got the chairman on the pitch and that. Yeah. You know, they're very, it's a very tight-knit club and community and the plans they've they've announced are absolutely sensational. I hope they get passed. I'm pretty certain they will because of what it brings to the area. You know, but you know, for me, Leicester are one of those clubs that you you look at at the moment and think they're a club going in the right direction, making the right decisions, not just on the field, but off the field as well. And that's really, really important. Their recruitment's been great. You know, they've got youngsters coming into their first team, the likes of Luke Thomas, Hamza Chowdhury, uh, Harvey Barnes. Um, there's another lad I can't remember his name. He's just been promoted to the first team squad. There's lots of players that are, you know, um, are doing really well at the club. So, you know, yeah, I'm, they've done brilliant. And as I say, 15 years ago they're in League One. So it just shows you you can transform a club and put that stability into a club and, and allow it to go forward. 
Tony, uh, uh, on on that note, fans will, of course, of West Ham and and of lots of not just West Ham, but you know, Aston Villa, Wolves, perhaps uh, those what I would call like middle bracket teams yeah. outside the top six, but bigger than your 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 Burnleys and your Crystal Palaces, your Watfords, etc. Right? I mean, any fans of those listening, which there will almost certainly be none, but if there are, forgive me. But you know, I think it's fair to say, with no malice uh, intended, again. That West Ham, Everton, Wolves, some of the clubs you just mentioned, they're in that 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 middle bracket. Um, fans in that bracket will look at Leicester and go, "That is what I want." West Ham fans do the same thing. I think it's harder to do the, you know, Man City have done it as well. I think it's quite it's harder to do the the community stuff. Even at Upton Park, uh, it, it would have been fair to say that a lot of the community around Upton Park in the modern times wasn't necessarily made up of solely West Ham fans like it may have been in the old days or like it still is in Leicester or somewhere like Manchester. So I think it's hard to to beat West Ham with that stick and they do do lots of good community work as it is anyway. So that that's hard and being in London, it's already developed. But just as far as on the pitch goes, you mentioned the training ground there at the moment. That's such an easy stick with which West Ham are beat. Um, or the, the, the sort of the people that the owners of the club are, are beat with at the moment. Is it fair to say, though, that looking at Leicester and all the stuff they've done, although the messaging is brilliant and the way they've done it is phenomenal, it has cost a significant amount of money? Everything does, though, Will, doesn't it? Everything, you know, whether it's just in life or, you know, in football, obviously it's vastly inflated in football. But, you know, but they, even they, in football terms, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they've, they've spent a hell of a lot of money. Of course they have, you know, and they've, they've spent big in the transfer market as well. You know, I think Fafana was 30 million quid and Soyuncu wasn't cheap. And there's been other players they brought into the club. Tielemans wasn't cheap. Um, mm. You know, but that's, that's, that's where they are. They're, they're buying 25, 30 million pound players, which is where we want to be. You know, if Jess Lingard's 25 million pound, we need to buy Jess Lingard. You know, they're... <laughs> Uh, it, that's it's simple. You, that's what you've got to do. But you, you know, to, you, you've got to try and get the club into that position where you know they can spend that amount of money. I don't know how they're going to do that. I don't know whether they will be able to do that. But you, you know, all I can say is that I look at Leicester City Football Club, and it's it's an incredibly well run club, on and off the field. And you know, they for the last two seasons, this is the biggest tribute you can pay them. Last two seasons, they've been. They've been in a Champions League position up until the last game of the season. Now, can you yeah. imagine the excitement at our club if we've been in that position? I mean, we're, we're, we're all drooling over the fact we're in the Europa League. And, you know, if we'd have been anywhere near the Champions League, I know we got in the positions at one stage, but we wasn't consistently there. But, you know, if we could get anywhere near that, we would all be absolutely thrilled and delighted about that. So, um, you know, Leicester, yeah, it's a bit of a benchmark. And there are other really, really good clubs as well. But... The challenge for our football club, you know, and that's what we're talking about tonight, West Ham United Football Club, is to be, if you like, top of that second tier. And I hate to say that because I really believe we should be in the first tier. But we've got to accept at this moment in time, there probably is a top six in terms of finances mm. and ability to spend on players, you know, 50, 60 million pound players. We can't do that. But we want to try and be top of the second tier. And that second tier at the moment includes the likes of Leicester and Villa and Everton <laughs> and some great clubs and you know, we really need to be, you know, top of that second tier. That's what we've got to be trying to aim for. And that means, you know, we listen, we finished sixth. So we had Arsenal and Spurs behind us last year. So, you know, we've laid the, the foundations, if you like, and we've got to try and build on that this season. But, you know, you could do a lot worse than looking at Leicester and seeing how they're structured. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Right. A bit more about the uh, the style of play then, Tony, and what we expect from this game on Monday night. We'll go on to what we all expect from West Ham in a minute and, and predictions and stuff. As far as their their style of play goes, Tony, what, what, what can West Ham fans who, who haven't watched uh, too much of Leicester or as it's a new season, what can they expect from uh, from the Foxes on Monday night at London Stadium? Well, as I've already spoke about, they could well change their formation. The formation they played at the weekend was a 4 2 3 1. Um, obviously, a huge focus on, on Jamie Vardy, you know, as the, who's that front man who plays on the shoulder of the defenders. You know, so our defenders, you know, they've got to be aware because, you know, once he gets in on goal, not only is he quick enough still to get in behind the defence, you know, you know that if he's bearing down on goal, there's every chance the ball's going to end up in the back of the net. So, Heavy focus on Jamie Vardy. Um, at the weekend, they had Perez, they had uh, James Madison playing centrally behind Vardy and Harvey Barnes on the left. 
Uh, I think all three players got substituted at, uh, at a certain stage of the game. So, you know, that tells me that perhaps there wasn't quite the creation and, you know, the um, the chances set up for Jamie Vardy that the manager would have liked. Behind those three, you've got Tielemans and Ndidi, both really, really good midfielders. And I think this is where the key battle is going to be. It, it, it's about Tielemans and Ndidi against Suchek and Declan Rice. That, it, for me, is the real, real key to this game on how it's going to go. And in other words, if you listen, if you stand off Tielemans and allow him to play and spray the ball around, he will do that and he's good enough to do that. And there'll be good passes going here, there and everywhere. And Didi's much more of a holding midfield player, but he's still a very, very talented player that breaks things up. So our two midfield players have really got to get stuck into those two. And you've got to hope that defensively we can deal with the sort of the movement that the, the three behind Jamie Vardy and Vardy provide. If there is a slight weakness for Leicester, I'd say perhaps Daniel Armati at the moment, playing centre half. You know, he's he's sort of playing there because there's lots of injuries. I don't know whether Johnny Evans will come back. I know Fafana's out probably till the new year. So that's a big blow for them because he was sensational when he came into the team last season. So, um, But as I say, tactically, this will be a well organised Leicester team. Uh, that will try and hit uh, West Ham on the break, as we all know, with the pace of Jamie Vardy. But I come back to my point, they are very vulnerable at times from free kicks and corners, and we've got to look to exploit that. Now, there we go, then. Sounds like mine and Tony's bets are coming in. No problem, Jonesy. Uh, James, what are you expecting from West Ham, then? Obviously, we've, we've sort of touched on Newcastle in quite a lot of detail already. Uh, what are you expecting from, from David Moyes? I mean, I, th- I don't think we'll see much change. I think we'll be quite happy to allow Leicester... <laughs> we can't, can we? We haven't got any players. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But we're quite happy to allow Leicester to have, have the ball. Um, you know, that's what was so successful last last season, was c- try and catch them on a break. And um, the, the worry is, is that defensively, we need if we're going to do that defensively, we need to be much better than we were against Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, because they're far better in attack. Um, so... I mean, I, I don't expect much change. It'd probably be the starting, same starting eleven, um, same tactics. We'll just probably sit off a little bit more than we did against Newcastle and kind of, you know, allow Leicester onto us and, and catch them on a break, much like we did against them at London Stadium last season. Obviously, that worked nicely. Got it ropey towards the end, but we're racing at the three goal lead. So, yeah, I don't, I don't expect much different from 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 David Moyes' West Ham this weekend. Would you on the, you know, if you were going to make a change? Jonesy, I, th- I think it's probably Craig Dawson, like we've mentioned there. Would you would you drop him and give give us a D up a go uh, this early in the season, or do you just say no? Nah, he's just you know he was just getting his some rust out of his the system, and and you can't sub him after you've won four two. Yeah, I think it'd be harsh to drop him. He's 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 had a couple of shaky moments, but um, that's one bad performance he's had in what 17, 18 he's had since he joined the football club. And it was in the first day of the season when it's still a little bit rusty at that level. So, yeah, it would be a little bit harsh. Um, and I just wouldn't trust Diop. Yeah, up Diop's hardly like, Paolo Maldini, is he? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't trust him coming in against someone like um, Vardy. So, mm. yeah, like, we'll keep Dawson in the team, definitely. Even with his pace. All right, fair enough. Tony, what do, what do you expect? Same question from the Hammers. Well, I, I agree with Jonesy. Same again. I think I don't, don't see too many changes, providing everyone's fit and no injury problems. Why? Why would you change it? You know, that would be the, my question. You know, you've just won four two. You play fantastically well. Yeah, we've asked you about you know a few question marks about the defensive performance and I understand where you're coming from from Craig Dawson. But let's not forget he's been outstanding since he arrived at the football club. And I think the one thing David Moyes is with his players is very very loyal. And yeah, I think yeah. you would have to have quite a few really, really bad performances for him even to consider leaving players out. So I think he'll be same again, boys. Um, <laughs> where we've got to be careful, I think it's just, um, you know, I understand what you're saying about, you know, defensively and dropping off and allowing Leicester to, to come at us and hit them on the break. And I, I get that. We, we can do that. But I also think that we probably need to be on the front foot because of that atmosphere that I'm expecting. You know, I, I really think that if if there's the build up, the, the atmosphere and the build up, and we all sink bubbles and everything, and we kick off, and then all of a sudden we just <laughs> step back and say, "Come on, Leicester, come and beat us," then it just kills the atmosphere. Whereas you can use and utilize that atmosphere. You know, you, the manager will say to them, "Boys, it's going to be a great atmosphere." Or he should be saying, "It's going to be a fantastic atmosphere." You know, go and get amongst them. Put them under pressure. Don't let them play. You know, get the ball forward. 
you know, win some free kicks and corners, get the ball in the box and that, see how well they can deal with all the, the what I've said about Leicester defensively. That's what I hope we'll do. You know, I understand what you're saying about, you know, you can sit back a little bit, but perhaps do that when you're a goal up, you know, because if we can get a goal up, that's when we're at our best, I think, because we're a good team. And if we go a goal up, we can then sit back because we can absorb up defensively. And then we've then got the pace and everything to hit teams on the counter attack. And, and that, for me, is the way to go about the game. You know, take the game to Leicester, have a real charge up, get a goal up, and then, you know, then you can hit them on the break when they're trying to get, a, you know, get back on level terms. That would be my tactics. But what do I know? What do I know? Nah, well, I mean, Tony, I'll be honest, it wouldn't be the first time James has been compared to Sam Allardyce, be it for his <laughs> views, <laughs> views on the world, his views on football, his tactics. He's just the sort of bloke he is. So, no, you wouldn't be the first one <laughs> no to criticise James <laughs> for being too pragmatic uh, at West Ham. No, I, I, I think especially with that, yeah, what an atmosphere it's going to be. The first capacity crowd at London Stadium for the best part of two years nearly and how desperate so many of us are um, to get back to it. So that's West Ham United v Leicester City on Monday night and who knows, it could be a Champions League decider this early into the season. Great opposition view there from former Leicester City striker Tony Cotty. Stay- 